Hello, good morning and welcome to ET Now's the newspaper show with me, Varun Hiremat. For the next half an hour, we'll be walking you through the important headlines from the Economic Times as well as the Times of India. But before we do that, let me remind you that the newspapers are completely safe. It's time to start getting your paper delivered to your residence. And if you want to do that, you go to wantmypaper.com where you can explore all the delivery options available for the same. I repeat again, wantmypaper.com if you are interested in the newspaper. With that being said, let's now get a move on. And we have an action-packed Friday morning lineup for you here, beginning with the fact that there's going to be some changes at the index. And SPI Life and Divis are to replace Infratel and Z in the Nifty. Saudi Arabia's PIF eyes up to a $1 billion investment in Geo's fiber assets. Eye on inflation and the RBI may halt their rate cuts. Diamond companies cut imports to keep prices stable. NCL Teeter point RP for Anil Ambani assets. Single e-compliance framework for companies in the works. Wage bill up only 2.9% in the June quarter, says the CMIE. EPFO records 6.55 lakh new subscribers in June. PM, French Defence Ministry may attend Rafale induction. CWC meet on Saturday to push for Raga as Kong chief. Let's now bifurcate for you like we always do, market versus corporate. And the market headlines begin with the fact that banks fear trading losses as yields rise. Restructuring plans fuels Tata Power's rally. Surging demand for steel lifts prices. PNB housing to get a boost with equity infusion. NBFC investments from Mauritius on RBI's radar. Okay, the corporate headlines. Bosch India's BS6 order book shrinks by 800 million US dollars. Agio is emerging fast as a strong rival to Mintra. Tata Steel and the UK government in talks to find a solution. Bharti plans high speed internet via OneWeb. And finally, GMM Fodler to buy majority stake in Parent Co. Alright, it's now a time to get on with our individual stories in page 1 of the Economic Times. Saudi Arabia's PIF looks to invest up to $1 billion in Geo's fiber assets. My colleague Ajay Sharma is now with us to walk us through the story. Good morning, Ajay. Thanks for taking time to chat with us this morning. Looks like the fundraising train is back on for Geo, and that too in the billions of dollars again. Well, that's correct. The billions of dollars is the uh, it's like the uh, for investment in any of the reliance assets, and especially when you're talking about uh, the shakes of uh, Saudi Arabia, then it has to be that unit. In fact. Uh, Saudi Arabia, which is the sovereign wealth fund, seem to be doubling up their play as far as Reliance's uh, digital assets are concerned after pumping in $1.5 billion in geo platforms. Now they are preparing another billion dollar check, this time for geo's fiber uh, business. And uh, in fact, uh, you know, fiber business has also seen a very good uh, response earlier. Adia said that they will also re engage. So, it appears that now that Geo Platform's uh, cup of investments is uh, full to the brim, it's Geo Fiber where other institutional investors are actually lining up. And remember, if you look at or if you listen to, uh, you know, the commentary coming in from some of the, uh, you know, conservative uh, business houses uh, or government and, or Saudi family-owned sovereign wealth funds like Mubadla, Adia, or even Saudi PIF, you would understand that they really want to uh, diversify their uh, holdings from 
uh, say US, China, into other interesting Asian plays, uh, especially technology back. They've also caught the fancy of technology related, uh, you know, investments. So uh, geo platforms and geo fiber and what Mukesh Ambani has actually uh, created over the years as a technology media telecom play seem to be catching the fancy and uh, that's why this money seems to be you know com coming in droves so it will be very interesting to see uh, how it goes from here on is is, is are, are more uh, big institutional market investors also interested in geo platform and how geo platform really becomes another big uh, you know prized asset and where rally and locking actually uh, happens so it will be very interesting remember geo platform was Basically, transferred into SPV where RI holds majority stake. Right, Ajay, most definitely very interesting transaction coming up yet again. And it's just amazing to see when one company, which has already put $1.5 billion into Geo, is looking to up its ante even higher. So, an interesting one. Let's see how that Reliance counter may respond to this in trade today. Let's move forward. We're keeping it with page one of the Economic Times. Um, Indian diamond companies have cut imports to keep prices stable and more than 2,000 large and small firms in India where 14 out of 15 stones are polished have joined hands acting on advisories issued by trade bodies to slash and cancel imports convince global miners Alrosa and De Beers of the urgency to defer supply. So that's again a very interesting story. Uh, please do have a look, page one of the Economic Times if you are interested. Okay, um, we're now going to switch gears again. This is something that's making headlines this morning. The central bank has released the minutes of the recent MPC meeting in which rates were maintained steady. Here we have Maitidi Busnurmat, our consulting editor, to walk us through the fine print. I think the minutes are not of that much interest in this particular case simply because the decision was a unanimous decision by all the MPC members. Normally, the interest in the MPC minutes arises when it's a split decision and you want to hear what the dissenting voice was and what were the arguments that were given. So I think at this time, all the members were unanimous. But given the fact that the economy is contra going to contract and contract quite sharply in this fiscal, there was no alternative but to keep you know, interest rates constant, given that this came along with the fact that inflation rates were rising. We've had inflation at over 6% for most of the current year. And also there is a sense that monetary policy has reached the end of its limits. So there would really be no further purpose served in cutting interest rates, even though the economy, as I said, was you know expected to contract. So I think the minutes this time are of less interest in that sense particularly because this is also a meeting where we saw that many of the decisions were taken as far as regulatory and other developmental aspects were concerned. As far as monetary policy per se was concerned, all the members were unanimous that they will, you know, keep the status, maintain status quo. In fact, this MPC meet was, in, was in also interesting for another reason, though I don't think the minutes would have anything on that score, simply because this is the last meeting of the MPC as presently constructed. The term of the external members comes to an end in September. RBI is understood to have asked the government to extend their terms, even though as per the Act, their terms cannot be extended. So it will be interesting to see what happens subsequently, because by September, when we'll have to see a new MPC come in for the October meet. So it will be interesting, but I don't think the NPC minutes will have anything at all, obviously, on that. So I think the NPC minutes this time would not have to be passed as closely, particularly because, as I said, most of the developments, most of the announcements were as far as the regulatory aspects were concerned. Right, Maithili, thanks for that expert take. And, of course, um, the RBI has decided to keep the rate steady and continue an accommodative stance for now. Um, page one of the Economic Times, yet again, it's one of those days where we're focusing on the front page quite a bit. Um, this story is about the NCLT, and the NCLT is to appoint RP for Anil Ambani's assets on the SPI plea. The state-owned lender claims that Ambani had personally guaranteed loans taken by the Reliance Communications company and is seeking to recover the money from him. So that's again a very important development, and it's an old one, it's something we've been hearing about, but it seems that the personal liability factor is now coming up again. Do have a read, page one of the Economic Times, if you are interested. Okay, um, now moving on, page seven of the Economic Times. 
The government is looking to develop a single online compliance framework for India Inc. to enable companies to comply with different regulatory requirements at one go. Officials mention that the idea is to reduce the compliance burden holistically. The Corporate Affairs Ministry has initiated discussions with various regulators on the possibility of creating a single platform or compliance forms with a common data source. So that's again very interesting. Page 7, do have a look if you are interested. Okay, seems like we're running short of our individual researchers this morning. I'm going to be walking you through the next couple stories as well, so please bear with me. Um, this is page 5 of the Economic Times and it's the markets page. And it's revolving around some inclusions in the Nifty and exclusions that are going to be taking place from today onward. So Devi's Laboratories, which we've just seen, has done exceptionally well as has SBI Life Insurance. These two are really top performing stocks. They will be included in the Nifty Index. So they've earned their place in the country's most prestigious index from the 25th of September. So excuse me, that's not today. That's a month away from today. But it has been decided that these two stocks will be entering. Now, as we only have 50 stocks in the Nifty, there's going to be two exits as well. So Bharti Infratel and Z Entertainment. Z Entertainment, I don't need to tell you why it's being excluded. We all know the issues that are going on there right now. Bharti Infratel as well, for its own reasons, is being excluded. So these replacements, mind you, will also be applicable to the Nifty 50 Equal Weight Index. And um, that's how it's going to pan out. Okay. Um, we are now moving on. Page 3 of the Economic Times. Um, the Air Force... IF planning for, a, excuse me, is planning for a high-profile Rafale induction ceremony which may include Prime Minister Narendra Modi and French Defence Minister Florence Parley at the Air Force Station in Ambala where the first five aircraft have been stationed. The French side is also likely to raise the possibility of a larger order for the Rafale fighter jets under the Make in India initiative. Okay, next, page 5, again we're coming back to the markets page. Um, the RBI goes tough on NBFC investments from Mauritius. It's turned down several applications over the past few weeks due to link with the island nation. RBI is concerned because the island nation has been included in the grey list by the Financial Action Task Force, a global intergovernmental organisation that fights money laundering and terror financing. Page 5, do have a read if you're interested. Okay, we're now switching gears a bit. Back to page 3 of the paper. My colleague Vinny Motiwala is going to walk us through the story. But let me just give you the intro. Ajio is emerging as a fast and tough rival to Mintra. Though Mintra still is the market leader, Ajio for many brands has grown rapidly. So hi Vinny, good morning. Thanks for joining in. What exactly... Um, is the difference between RGO and Mintra in terms of market leadership and is RGO really catching up? So, uh, Varun, you know, like you rightly said, as of now, there's a, still a gap between Mintra and RGO, but RGO is surely moving faster and catching up a lot. According to this ET report, you know, RGO is uh, you know, emerging as a very tough rival for Mintra. If you go to see, yes, the number of users for RGO and Mintra are still far apart and Mintra has around 2.2 million average uh, daily users if you go to see in the month of January to July this year. Uh, while for RGO it's only half a million. So, you know, there is a difference in the users. But if you go to talk, you know, according to the report when they spoke to uh, certain global fashion company CEOs, uh, they did say that, you know, for them, the sales uh, of RGO is, you know, take, uh, you know, growing very fast and it's grown as much as 10 times the, the weekly sales growth at RGO compared to the last year, same time. So, you know, that is showing an improvement in RGO's growth on a year-on-year -year basis. They're surely seeing a great improvement. Plus, uh, during the sales season also, they had done quite well. Mintra had also clocked a good enough growth. They are still the leader, but RGO is surely growing faster. And also, let's not forget that Jabong had shut down. So, you know, RGO is filling off uh, the gap for Jabong with shutdown is what a CEO also mentioned. Now, uh, you know, so that is a very interesting trend that we are seeing. And, you know, top brands also say that the business of RGO has almost reached as half as Mintra, so you know, surely close. Uh, they are coming closer to uh, 
you know mintra and you know we will keep a close eye on how this trend actually pans out and you know how fast is rgo going even in the coming months now okay thanks for that vini let's now get to um page 1 of the times of india the tharur led um Parl IT panel summons Facebook on September 2nd amid row in an escalating of hostilities I'm sorry not Facebook FB I'm sorry in an escalation of hostilities BJP MP Nishikan Dubey wrote to Lok Sabha speaker Om Birla demanding that Tharoor be removed as chair of the panel the summons pertains to measures taken by Facebook to prevent misuse of social and online platforms So that's page one of the Times of India. Um, please do have a read if you are interested. Okay, page nine of the Economic Times. Um, Tata Steel is in discussion with the UK government to find a sustainable structural solution for the group's steel business, said Chairman Chandrasekharan. Alleging fears that the talks between the two had broken off, Tata Steel reported a consolidated net loss. A 4,609 crore for the June quarter, mainly due to its loss-making Europe operations. Okay, looks like we're coming to the end of our show. A little bit ahead of time today. Um, let's just bring you the top five headlines from the Times of India before we bring on the impaired segment. COVID patients aged 50 plus can't home isolate, says the BMC. India tops 12 lakh cases in August, making it the highest in the world. Navi Mumbai's excuse me, Navi Mumbai, India's third cleanest city, and Indore is the first. India and China to work toward disengagement. And Dhoni embodies spirit of new India, says the Prime Minister. So those were the headlines from the Times of India. We've now come to the end of the newspaper show. So thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Keep it with ET now. We have the market coming up at 8 a.m. But before that, news for the hearing impaired.